The economic forecast for Portugal has taken a turn since becoming a Eurozone bailout recipient. Part of the progress can be attributed to the country's privatisation programmes. Here to tell us more is Sergio Monteiro, Secretary of State for Infrastructure, Transport and Communication. Sergio, state entity PubPublica has been commandeering the process of privatising various airports, including Aeroportos do Portugal. Before the agreement was made, a new economic regulatory process was created. Tell me about it. Uh, we started the privatisation by changing the regulation because we thought previous regulation was meant to develop a new airport. It was meant to a greenfield project instead of the approach we took, which was to take better use of existing infrastructure. We started a public consultation in which we heard all stakeholders involved in the airport business, directly and indirectly, and based on that information, we have decided to go closer to a model of dual tail instead of a pure single tail, but taking into consideration all feedback received from airlines. So we believe that we have a regulation in which the interest of the airport owner, the airlines and the Portuguese economy were taken into consideration. Now, are there any transportation initiatives you plan on pursuing now that the European Central Bank and IMF will no longer be reviewing the Portuguese economy? We continue to have TEP's privatisation on the forefront of our agenda. We are constantly reviewing competition conditions uh, in order to see if there are sufficient competitive tension and environment in order to relaunch the privatisation process. There are another area, which is the ports. We have an ambitious agenda to multiply by three a port container movement capacity in the Portuguese ports, and also concessions for the rendering of public service in urban areas, both in Lisbon and in the Oporto region. So there are a lot of initiatives that we are taking towards the openness of uh, the economy and the reduction of subsidies granted by the state. Manuel, Portugal committed to a wide-ranging privatisation programme back in 2011. What else is being sold off? Well, let me just review the privatisations which we have just concluded after the successful privatisation of NA airports. In the last 12 months, we have concluded the first IPO in the previous five years of the mail operator CTT, which was a very relevant operate transaction. And today, CTT has already joined the Portuguese Stock Exchange Index and has a market capitalization of more than 1 billion euros. Then, we have also privatized the CGD insurance arm, which is the state-owned bank insurance arm that accounts for more than 30% of the insurance market share in Portugal. This was the largest M&A deal in the insurance sector in Europe in the last three years. Now, we are going ahead with the privatization of EGF, the waste management company, which accounts for more than 65% of the waste management treatment in terms of volume and covers more than 50% of the territory. It is a national market leader and it is also a very relevant player in Europe. This process has shown very attractive in terms of the number of non-binding offers that were received. We received seven non-binding offers from different geographies and we are now going in the phase of binding offers. Finally, we are going ahead with other processes such as privatization of the remaining stakes in REN and several other concessions that are going to be launched on the due term, which includes, among others, an online gambling framework concession that is being prepared. All these processes are critical on the recovery of the Portuguese uh, economy and inducing more confidence and helping to further progress the growth which is starting this year with 1.2% yearly growth. And so how does the public stand to gain from all of these privatisation deals? The privatisation programme is one of the cornerstones of our adjustment of the Portuguese economy. Our privatisations have been able to attract long-term investors from a diversified set of geographies. And those investors are helping to boost growth and increase efficiency and the competitive position of the country. The introduction of new shareholders on these Portuguese companies are enabling those companies to finance itself for longer maturities at a lower cost in higher volumes, which is also critical. On the top of that, the Portuguese government has been undergoing a substantial regulatory revision of some sectors that also assures that these companies are committed to achieve public service goals. Also very relevant, all these privatizations have been enabling revenues that exceed 5% of the GDP and these 5% of the GDP in revenues are being used to reduce the public level of indebtedness. It is also critical 
the privatization agenda in the sense that those investors are raising joint ventures for the Portuguese corporates to be able to internationalize themselves and to reinforce the exports to other markets which also give a strong contribution to the Portuguese growth. Isabel, a fear that has been raised by economic forecasters is that the government's efforts to attract foreign investment involves cutting labour costs and making it easier to hire and fire workers. What do you make of this criticism? The labour reform was one among many that this government has implemented. Other reforms have to do also with, for instance, the restructuring and achieving the operational balance of the SOE sector and also the privatizations. We privatized several companies that were fully state-owned or partially state-owned and we achieved uh, uh, over 8 billion euros of revenues in the process. So what we are aiming with these reforms is essentially to make the economy more flexible and we are already seeing the results of that and essentially it's becoming more flexible that you achieve the improvement in unemployment and, and in labour conditions. So how do you plan on instilling confidence in your foreign investors given that you were just taken off the Eurozone bailout recipient list? We have, the, since the very beginning of the programme, we have been working very hard in order to rebuild the confidence of investors. And we have this, done this in two ways. One way, we were kept a very close contact with investors by, by informing them and by being present, either through the debt management office or by the government. On the other hand, by accomplishing the targets that we were asked for in terms of the, uh, the memorandums of understanding that we signed with the Troika. So we have seen already also our efforts paying back and that's very visible in the adjustment that we have seen in the public debt interest rates and the spreads toward Germany. Sergio, does the government's long-term economic recovery plan involve relying less on foreign investment and improved labour conditions? I would say it's the other way around. Throughout the privatisation process we have shown that the bidder that has from a financial standpoint and an economic and development and strategic uh, standpoint the best proposal wins. We have had investment from China, from the Middle East, from Europe and the Americas. And we continue to believe that foreign investment together with the internal part of the consumption and investment is the best way to bolster and foster the Portuguese economy.